We're going to talk about MR value, but value, it's a tricky word and it's loaded with a lot of, a lot of baggage. But today, starting this morning, I hope that we as a society can employ some devices to cut away that baggage and bring higher value to our work. There's always going to be a need for both targeted and comprehensive uh, MR examinations, but I think we have this really big opportunity to reinvent MRI uh, into a low-cost, high-value, uh, disruptive technology that'll be a huge benefit to our patients. It's when we want to go someplace where the value of MR might be even higher, we must know where we are now. And I found that among these um, uh, 20, 22 responses I got from my about 50 questionnaires I sent out, they came from 15 European countries. And among these, there were at least um, about 40% in neuro and MSK indications where uh, MRI served as a first-line investigation, which I think is already a good number. MR value means different things to different people. And I think it's important for us to get everybody on the same side. And we need to discuss how we're going to do that. It may mean better contrast, better biological markers, may mean better access, better education. So we would like to find that out, actually, what MR value means to each individual scientist, radiologist, and practitioner. MR value, first of all, means that we should try to exploit the diagnostic information that MRI provides wisely. Uh, having said this, um, I would like to add that for the past decades or so, um, MR imaging has become increasingly complicated. So people strive to extract as much diagnostic information out of a given patient or lesion as possible. And that has contributed to the fact that, that uh, MRI is perceived as a very cost-intensive imaging method, a very expensive imaging method, which then restricts its use. So the MR Value Initiative, among others, aims at increasing access to MR imaging in general. There's lots of challenges, I think, throughout the world. Of course, reimbursement is very different in each country. Some countries will actually um, only reimburse MR if it's actually quite lengthy, whereas if we're looking at shortening exams, people might not get reimbursed. Um, I mean, the availability of MRI scanners in general can be an issue, of course, in some countries, especially developing countries. Um, education is something that um, is, at the moment, uh, or the level of education is, some, is a challenge that can be addressed by ISMRM specifically, of course, through all of the educational um, well, courses and conferences. If it comes to breast imaging, it's long been known that MR is by far the most ex uh, accurate imaging test that we have. It is far more accurate than mammography or ultrasound or other new breast imaging methods. We left everything away and just focused on one pre, one post, post contrast acquisition and then saw how far we would get from this and found that even with this very short abbreviated protocol that takes like three minutes in the scanner, uh, we are able to um, identify breast cancer with the same diagnostic accuracy as with a very full lengthy protocol. The beauty is that also the reading time is greatly reduced. It takes only three seconds or so for an experienced breast imager to establish presence or absence of breast cancer. Think of abridging pulse sequence protocols, making it simple and fast in order to improve access to MRI, to, to, uh, to use it as a first-line imaging method in many clinical scenarios, be it screening for prostate cancer, for HCC, or even for in the emergency department. Asia is very diverse, and there's a wide range of different medical practices and diagnostic radiology practices, ranging from university practice to government service and private practice. Therefore, not going to be one size fits all, and we need to have a conversation about how we're going to improve things for each of those different niches. I think it will be important for ISMRM to reach out to the region, especially in the developing countries in Asia. I think a lot can be done and a lot of good can be done to educate most of the practitioners, both the scientists as well as the doctors, the radiologists who are reading the reports. And I think that's where most of the benefits can be strategically applied. We want to make sure that 
um, we can incorporate MRI more in, in our diagnostics, not as a very expensive tool as it is seen now, but more as a cost-effective way to, um, to do our diagnostics. And we need to convince policymakers that this is possible. And I think ISMRM can have an important role in that.